It was a quiet day at the Baratier restaurant. The owner and head chef Zef decided to retire into his bedroom for a quick shut-eye, when suddenly a loud bang occurred. A cannon hit the roof of the restaurant directly above Zef's room, also injuring the old man. The perpetrator was quickly brought in front of him, a teenage boy. So the chef ordered the boy to work at Baratier to pay for the damages. But the restaurant's peace was quickly ruined again when pirate Krieg and his crew tried to take over the restaurant. And during the chaos, the restaurant sous chef noticed something strange happening to to his body. The damages he took while fighting was starting to rapidly heal and he felt a sudden burst of power within and thus he takes action. Hey again this is Joy Girl and I'm back to present another alternative what if scenario. This time I'll show you what would have happened if Sanji's genetic enhancement kicked in much earlier in his life. But before we begin and speaking of epic powers this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. The home to some of the coolest fighters in the mobile gaming universe. Packed with amazing visuals, unique character designs and tactical PvP content, there's loads to love about Raid. And something I really appreciate is the level of detail and thought behind the champions. For example, they have themed champions to make the holidays even more fun. And these are my top three. There's Harvest Jack, who is your Halloween nightmare incarnate. Sir Nicholas, who spends his time battling on the other 364 days of the year when it's not Christmas. But my favorite is Cupidus for Valentine's Day. Because who says a lover can't also be a fighter? And I'm sure that these epic champions champions will come in handy because Raid has added a new challenge with the fearsome new boss Akumori the Phantom Shogun. This undead general is guarding everything you need for accessory extension. A new feature that allows you to upgrade your gear to even greater heights. And if you've somehow missed the incredible animated limited series Raid Call of the Arbiter then you can check out all 10 episodes on the official Raid Shadow Legends YouTube channel now. With all of this exciting stuff and more on the way if you haven't started playing Raid now is the time. New players can use my link or scan the QR code on screen to get a free starter pack with all of this crazy in-game loot. Once you're in and crushing your enemies, come find me under the name Joy Girl, join my clan, and we'll be legends together. So click my link in the description below, and I'll see you in the battlefield. Now back to the video. During his fight with Queen and Onigashima, Sanji with the help of the raid suit awakened his genetic modifications that had laid dormant within him for the first time, giving Sanji a boost in his already superhuman ability, turning his flesh into an impossibly tough exoskeleton and gaining crazy accelerated healing. Sanji became pretty much invulnerable after this awakening and was able to dispatch Queen, a Yonko commander, with relative ease after this power-up. But what would happen if Sanji unlocked his Jerma enhancements and all its ridiculous abilities much earlier in the story? As we know, in the original timeline, this was achieved through multiple uses of the raid suit. But for simplicity's sake, let's say that the awakening occurred when Sanji was under extreme pressure. Like back in the attack on Baratier, which we will continue with. But for now, let's look at what would happen if Sanji had his awakening as originally intended by Judge all the way back in the North Blue. The first big change is that Sanji would have probably been taller. See, all of Sanji's siblings are over six feet tall with the youngest Yonji being the tallest at six foot four in height. And the fact that the drug didn't work on Sanji during his developmental stage perhaps has something to do with him not reaching the six foot mark like his brothers. And while we can't be sure on that, we can at least guarantee that the biggest change is that Sanji would have had a much better childhood, completely opposite to the hell that his family put him through, and he would be a beloved child of Vinsmoke Judge and a feared commander of the Germa army, poised to lead their kingdom in the future alongside his siblings. Training as a child, Sanji would pass all tests with flying colors and would grow up to be an emotionless warrior that only moves according to his father's wishes. The unfortunate result of this is that Sanji Sanji would not develop a closer bond with his mother Sora, who would pass away knowing she couldn't save any of her sons. Sanji would have also more than likely not have developed a passion for cooking and would live his life only to serve the Germa kingdom. This means that Sanji would never have wanted to run away and sail the seas to look for the All Blue, and he would have never met Zef because Sanji would not be on the ship that Zef and his crew attacked. Zef would then have been stuck atop a rock on his own and would have survived like he did in the original story, and this time he wouldn't have eaten one of his legs since he didn't need to share the food that he had left. But since he gets to keep both legs and he never met Sanji, Zef would have likely continued to be a pirate and terrorize the seas for a little while longer, increasing his reputation as Red Leg until he was able to achieve his dream of opening a restaurant. But in this time, without Sanji's help and without Zef's training, Sanji's strength would likely be limited to what the Germa technology can provide, relying heavily on the use of his raid suit much like his siblings. And without the idea that a chef 
wife must protect their hands at all times and therefore must not use them in battle. Sanji's fighting style would also be completely different. However, this would also mean that Sanji would be proficient in other forms of hand-to-hand -hand combat, along with his Germa technology, as well as swordsmanship, which he would continuously train in. Most of his attacks would also be different. Instead of Diable Jambe and other cooking-themed attacks, Sanji's arsenal would be germified and in tune with his epithet Stealth Black, same as we've seen with his other siblings. And without the influence of neither Zeph nor Sora, Sanji's chivalrous code to never hit women is unlikely to have formed, representing a huge and quite frankly, a horrifying change to Sanji's character. With the power of his raid suit combined with his proven stealth mastery seen in the series, Sanji would have likely been Germa's best spy, excelling in the art of espionage, infiltrating enemy territories to assist his army in formulating a plan of attack. And Sanji not working at Baratier means that he never meets Luffy and becomes a straw hat, making their chance encounter at sea very slim unless the Germa Double Six is sent to eradicate an island the Straw Hats choose to protect, in which case Sanji and the Germa army will have to face Luffy and the Straw Hats as an enemy. And while the idea of Sanji as a Germa being the Straw Hats' enemy is something I'm not fond of, I have to admit there is something fun about the thought of seeing Germa's invisible swordsman Vinsmoke Sanji facing off against the Straw Hats' Antorium Master Roronoa Zoro. Judge would have likely continued to seek an alliance with a powerful figure to achieve his goal of conquering the North Blue, and while he tries other means to do so, it would still have likely ended with Judge agreeing to an alliance with Big Mom due to the convenience of achieving this through marriage. In the original storyline, Sanji was chosen for this arranged marriage because Judge didn't want his other favored children to be married into the Charlottes. But since Sanji is also valued by Judge in this timeline, he would have to make the tough decision of choosing from one of his beloved children. However, whether Sanji or any one of his other siblings is chosen for this union wouldn't really matter much because Big Mom, who never intended to form an alliance, would still betray the Vinsmokes and kill them and take over their army and technology, resulting in Big Mom gaining a huge advantage to the race for the One Piece and the throne of the Pirate King. And with no Luffy to come to his aid in this situation, this would unfortunately be the end for the Germa commander, Vinsmoke Sanji. Now that's how Sanji's life would be different, but let's take a look at what the Straw Hats' journey would look like without Sanji. Throughout the story, Sanji offered his use to the Straw Hats in more ways than just cooking. On top of his role as a chef, Sanji is one of the crew's top three fighters and has displayed espionage skills that has positively impacted his crew's survival on more than one occasion. So the Straw Hats would probably not have reached very far without Sanji. But just how far? Well, let's take a look. The Straw Hats consisting of Luffy and his crew of Zoro, Nami, and Usopp would arrive at Baratier, where Luffy is forced to work after damaging the restaurant and full body leaves the restaurant unharmed with his date, having not angered Sanji. Yin, however, having broken out of full body ship, walks into Baratier asking for food, only to be beaten and kicked out by the cooks. So without Sanji, Gin would have died of starvation, right? Well, not really. Because remember Zev, who was looking for the new errand boy Luffy, would have ended up at the part of the ship where Sanji fed Gin, and with Sanji's values of never letting anyone go hungry being something he inherited from Zev, Gin would have likely been given food by Zev and would be grateful for this as he leaves the Baratier. So Gin would later return with Krieg and they'd be fed, and once Krieg's back after regaining his energy, Krieg would attack Baratier as he did in the original timeline, but Gin would still not kill Zev out of gratitude to Zev himself this time. And ultimately, Luffy would still defeat Krieg. Zoro and Mihawk would still have their duel and go ahead with Usopp and Johnny to follow Nami. But Luffy would leave with just Yosaku this time. Because there's no other cook at Boratier who had Sanji's ambition, and really no one else apart from the already retired Zev sparking Luffy's interest. So Luffy leaves the restaurant without recruiting a chef to go and save Nami, who in Luffy's mind is also a de facto chef at this point. I'd say the crew's doing pretty well so far, but not having Sanji in the crew would quickly impact their next battle because there's a pretty good chance that they don't leave Kokoyashi village alive. They would already be one man short facing off against Arlong's top officers. And Zoro and Usopp would still beat Hachi and Chu, but there would be no one to deal with Kurubi. Arlong would have killed Zoro had Luffy not saved him in the original timeline. But this time, Luffy wouldn't be able to do anything having been stuck drowning in the water without Sanji to free him. And so Luffy would also end up being killed by Arlong as well. But let's say that by some miracle, the crew finds a way to defeat Arlong and Kurubi, the biggest problem the crew will face in the story would happen very soon after at Little Garden, because there would be no one to fool Crocodile into thinking the Straw Hats are dead, and without Sanji to find the eternal lock pose, the Straw Hats would have to stay at Little Garden for up to a full year before they could leave the island, if they could even last that long, because more likely, they would be sitting ducks while Crocodile would send more agents to Little Garden to kill the Straw Hats. But let's say they manage to defeat everyone that 
was sent with the help of the giants and somehow find themselves one of the Baroque Works agents' eternal log pose. But could they survive much longer? Say, for example, at Drum Island. Remember how Sanji saved Luffy and Nami from an avalanche? Well, without Sanji and the crew, Luffy would probably still be able to come out of the avalanche alive, but I can't say the same for Nami, who was severely ill at this point. And again, even if they somehow managed to survive this, let's say because Luffy shielded Nami from all the damage and took her to Dr. Kureha and Chopper to be treated, once they get to Arabasta is where things get really depressing. Crocodile was prepared and knew all the Straw Hats' faces apart from Sanji's thanks to Mr. Two, and had even managed to capture the Straw Hats with a banana wani was mere moments away from eating the crew until Sanji arrived to save them. With Zoro unable to cut the steel and the water rising effectively disabling Luffy and Smoker, this unfortunately is where the crew's journey would more than likely end without Sanji. Even if they were to continue on further, they would just keep on running into trouble where they would have been helpless without Sanji. There would be no one to sabotage the arc Maxime, meaning Luffy wouldn't have been able to catch up to Enel, and Nami would be stuck with him while Skypea is destroyed. When Robin was taken by the CP9, no one would have followed them, meaning Usopp, Robin, and Frankie would all be taken to Eni's lobby successfully. No Sanji means no one to persuade Usopp to help the crew, meaning no legendary Soga King, and no Usopp to join the rescue means no giants to help the Straw Hats. But even if Usopp somehow had a change of heart, managed to escape and join the crew to rescue Robin, he would have been likely killed by Jabra without Sanji there to save him. Dead Usopp means no one to bring the keys for Robin's handcuffs and no one to encourage Luffy to get back up and defeat Rob Lucci. And even if they somehow managed to defeat everyone on the island and rescue Robin, the entire crew would either be dead or exhausted. Even if there's a chance that Zoro could defeat both Kaku and Jabra himself, he would more than likely be in a similar condition as Luffy after he beat Luchi, because after all, Kaku and Jabra are two of the CP9's top agents, which means Luffy and Zoro can't move after their fight. Same with Chopper because of the after effects of using Monster Point. Usopp is dead, and what we have left is just Nami, Robin, and Frankie to defend themselves and protect everyone against the Hall of Marines since Sanji isn't there to close the gates of justice. So by now, we all get the point, right? The implications of Sanji awakening his German modifications as a child would be huge and depressing to the entire story. But perhaps the most unfortunate victim of Sanji not becoming a straw hat is Duval, who would never get to experience what it feels like to be handsome. But I don't want to end the video on such a sad note, and thankfully, that is just one of two scenarios on what could possibly happen if Sanji became a modified human earlier in his life. So now, let's take a look at what if Sanji joined the Straw Hats as a modified human, which brings us back to Baratie. After his awakening, Sanji makes quick work against Don Krieg and his entire crew, while the onlookers are shocked at how quickly this is all happening. Luffy is impressed and more than ever wants this amazingly strong fighting chef to join his crew, and even the warlord Dracul Mihawk takes notice of what is happening and is excited at the potential of seeing the gutsy rubber boy, the brave swordsman who just earned his respect, and the monster of a chef in the Grand Line. As the conflict is resolved, Sanji still decides to leave Baratier to join the Straw Hats. We'll say that Sanji is able to keep his emotions and personality even after his awakening, instead of being stripped away of his compassion like the rest of his siblings. And if you must insist on a reason why, then let's say for simplicity's sake that Sanji's emotions are unaffected because he's past the developmental age where he's prone to change, and he's already a grown man who's formed his own ideals, which was only further solidified while being inspired by Luffy and Zoro's actions at Baratier. And modified human Sanji earlier in the story would be a huge boost for the Straw Hats and would instantly make their journey much easier. The crew would go on as in the original story, defeating opponents along the way, and in Sanji's case, in a much easier fashion than he did in the original timeline. On top of this, the situations where Sanji was seen as being at a disadvantage would yield entirely different results. For example, Sanji wouldn't have been heavily injured at Drum Island when he rescued Luffy and Nami from the Avalanche, and would have participated in the battle unlike in the original timeline when Dr. Kureha prevented him from doing so because of his injuries. He'd make quick work of Mr. Two in Arabasta, and at Skypea, Sanji would have an easier time dealing with Satori, and might have even been able to come out of the exchange against the Nell with much less damage. But because Haki had still not been introduced by this point, even with his Germa awakening, the overall outcome of that interaction would have been the same. At that point, without Haki, only Luffy would have been able to defeat Enel. But Sanji would have engaged in an actual battle. Soon, however, Sanji would be faced with the realization that his new power-up is still not enough as he and his crew face and are utterly defeated by Admiral Aokiji of the Marines. And another example is the time he raided the Puffing Tom when the CP9 took Robin hostage. While he may not be able to defeat 
defeat all the CP9 members and take Robin back right then and there, Sanji would have at least beat Bluno and perhaps fight Kaku to a stalemate until he's overwhelmed by their numbers and is eventually forced to wait for his crew. Once they get to Ennius lobby, Sanji would still lose to Colorfa since he would still refuse to fight her and after Nami steps in, he would quickly recover once the effect of Kalifa's Devil Fruit runs its course. And by this point, Sanji could go on in his original journey, defeating Jabra easily after unlocking a much stronger Diable Jambe head with his exoskeleton. Thriller Bark would still pretty much be the same with Sanji defeating Absalom and helping the crew against Oz, the only difference being that these battles would be much easier. But the problem would once again arise once they're face to face with the warlord Bartholomew Kuma, at which point another major change in the story would happen. Sanji would save Zoro who tried to challenge Kuma and this time is surprised but unaffected by Kuma's tough exterior. The fight would continue until Kuma decides to use Ursus Shock and after unleashing his attack knocking out almost everyone as Kuma makes his way to take Luffy, Zoro comes flying out of nowhere to attack him but Sanji who's also up and already recovering attacks Kuma first. So Sanji would continue to fight Kuma shocking the warlord questioning whether Sanji is also a cyborg like himself due to his tough exterior and Kuma would notice that Sanji has recovered and is able to affect his metal body while Zoro watches in shock as Sanji poses a challenge to Kuma. But overall, while he has the durability to withstand a good amount of attacks and has enough power output to bother Kuma and get him to fight a little seriously, at this point in the story and again prior to unlocking his Haki, Sanji would have still been on the losing end once Kuma decides to fight with more effort. Sanji is continuously put down by Kuma until Zoro once again offers his head in exchange for Luffy's life, but Sanji once again gets up and offers himself in place of Zoro, and as Zoro is annoyed at this situation, tries to knock Sanji out, but this time this has no effect due to Sanji's new tough exoskeleton and his body is already on its way to recovery. At this point, Sanji would either knock Zoro out or convince Kuma to take him instead, and so Kuma would transfer Luffy's pain to Sanji, and Sanji experiences all of Luffy's pain at once, which is able to withstand but still left bloody because the huge burst of pain is much faster than his ability to heal. Thanks to this ability though, Sanji is able to recover much faster and Zoro comes out of the event well enough to join the celebration with the rest of the crew. And as the Straw Hats move on to another island with Sanji in a recovered state, Zoro is also not as damaged as he was in the original story, which would impact their battle against the next admiral they face, Admiral Kizaru. The monster trio would fight Kizaru together and Kizaru would take an interest in Sanji who seems to be in another world of durability and the crew would be able to fight much better as a team since Zoro is also in better health not having had taken in all of Luffy's pain. The crew would offer a bit more resistance with enhanced human Sanji and full strength Zoro, however they would still ultimately lose to Kizaru. Until Kuma arrives and sends the crew to their respective islands where Sanji's location is still the Kamabaka Kingdom. Sanji, while having a much better strength to fight the Okama and collect the 99 recipes, would still experience his mental health for two years being constantly chased day and night. And right after this training and learning Haki is where Sanji would really become a monster straight out of the time skip. With all of his abilities, abilities already awakened, Sanji now adds the missing ingredient Haki to complete the recipe to unlock Ifrit Jambe. Of course, he would easily defeat the same enemies he defeated in the original timeline and his big name battles would have very different outcomes had he been this powerful after his training. In Punk Hazard, Nami would have no issue being in Sanji's tough body which would have quickly recovered from the damages it took, which means that in his fight with Virgo, Sanji would not have had his shin cracked thanks to his tough exoskeleton and would have likely defeated Virgo before he could run away. In Dressrosa, he would have instantly put up a better fight against Doflamingo and while his Diable Jambe was unable to penetrate Doflamingo's defense, his Ifrit Jambe, however, stands a good chance. But because he doesn't know of Doffy's abilities and Doffy himself is no pushover, Sanji would have likely struggled until Law comes to help, at which point the two would have likely teamed up against Doflamingo. But Sanji would decide to leave Law to take care of Doflamingo while he himself takes his crew to safety away from the clouds to avoid the dangers of Doflamingo's ability. And as they leave Dressrosa, Sanji and his team would still run into the Big Mom pirates who are after Caesar Clown and would attack Big Mom's ship after getting permission from Luffy. They manage to get away and land at Zo, where they face off and defeat some of the Beast pirates and save the injured Minx. They stay at Zo until Pecoms and Beige arrive to tell Sanji about Judge's plan to marry him into the Charlotte family, thereby landing Sanji back to the Vinsmokes. Sanji would have been able to fend off and possibly defeat Beige and his crew or even drive them away with the help of Caesar's ability and the help of Nekomamu who would arrive after Sanji's prolonged fight with Beige's crew, but it's only a matter of time before they tell him that he needs to go with them or Zeph and the Baratier will be in danger. So Sanji would still decide to go and a similar line of events from the Hulkek Island arc 
would more or less take place. The only difference is that Sanji would have defeated any family member who challenges him since he's now much stronger until he gives up fighting back after being threatened with the safety of those he cares for. The Vinsmokes are surprised that Sanji's genetic enhancement has awakened and Judge might even consider welcoming him back to the Germa army. But since he's already in an agreement with the temperamental Yonko Big Mom, he would more than likely force Sanji to continue with the marriage. Of course, Luffy would eventually come to save Sanji and make their escape to Wano. And saving his family from being killed by Big Mom also means that the threat to Zeph is gone. And although during the escape, Sanji would have likely been the faster character at that point, and he wouldn't have needed to be saved by Niji, therefore wouldn't have been sneakily given a raid suit. But let's say Sanji somehow finds himself in possession of it anyways, and decides to keep it. Sanji's fights in Wano included clashes with Page One and DS Drake, where no victor was announced. But this time, as Sanji again decides to wear the raid suit in both fights to hide his identity, which in turn makes him even more stronger than he already is, Sanji would have then easily defeated two Tobi Ropo on two separate occasions, increasing his infamy amongst the Beast Pirates crew as the man who defeated two of the Tobi Ropo. As a result, Ulti would have actively targeted Sanji during the raid since he was the one who defeated Page One, and had they met, Sanji would have once again suffered another defeat at the hands of a female. But during the raid, not having the strange feelings he experienced in the original story, Sanji would continue wearing the raid suit because it gives him much greater power, speed, durability, and the ability to turn invisible on top of his genetic enhancements that already includes an exoskeleton and accelerated healing. And in the original timeline, we saw Sanji have difficulty holding back both king and queen, but with his German enhancements, plus the use of the raid suit, Sanji might have defeated at least one of them early in the raid, with Marco keeping the other one busy. He passed out after fighting queen in the original timeline due to exhaustion, and in part because of the new changes occurring in his body. But in this timeline, Sanji is already used to his genetic enhancements, having grown accustomed to it over the entire time he was a straw hat. So after defeating Queen, genetically enhanced Sanji wearing a raid suit would then move on to fight King and even more than likely defeat him as well as clearing the lie floor without the need for Dr. Dealer Tony Tony Chopper to administer a drug to Zoro, saving Zoro from taking double the damage and cancelling his appointment with the Grim Reaper. And since he hasn't passed out, Sanji has a choice to either go to the rooftop to help Luffy or save people in the burning castle. And Sanji would prove to be useful whichever one he chooses. If he goes to the rooftop, his Germa body on top of wearing the raid suit is durable enough to withstand a number of Kaido's attacks with his accelerated healing helping him to recover quickly. And all of this is enough to buy time until Luffy wakes up and rejoins the fight against Kaido. So Luffy would go on to awaken his devil fruit and defeat Kaido once and for all, ending the reign of the two emperors alongside the alliance with Sanji's footprints visible everywhere in the conflict. Without his inner struggles and all of the benefits, Sanji would decide to keep the raid suit, thereby increasing Stealth Black's growing fan base and the infamy of Black Leg Sanji. And that's what would happen if Sanji awakened his German modifications early in the story. But let me know what you think by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more One Piece videos. Thank you to all of our Patreon and channel members for help supporting the channel. And thank you for listening to another one of my ramblings. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.